So Amanda Floyd, thanks so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. I can't believe after all these years that we've worked together, this is my first time doing I a know. podcast. I know. It's crazy. I think there, well, there's one interview that I leaked as a podcast but I leaked it like years after and like originally I chopped it up and was like, I'm going to post these on social. So it's the first official podcast. You know, what's funny about that interview. I was thinking this morning, I was doing some, my personal development time and you know, my, my reading time. And I was remembering that interview. I think it was five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking back to it and the amount of growth Mm. that the both of us have had since then. It's crazy. And if I looked at myself in that moment, and you, I think, we both thought, wow, we were really doing so well mm. right now in this moment. And five years later, I look back and I'm like, it's crazy. Yeah. You've come a long way. And I, I mean, I, I hope the next five years is like that. I always want to be looking at myself as somebody who isn't the most accomplished. I don't, I want to, I always see what are the opportunities. Mm-hmm. And I hope that we're sitting down in five years thinking like, man, we could have never guessed you know, that we'd be here now yeah. because that's what it's the, about. The minute anybody thinks that they have succeeded, your career starts to die. Mm. Exactly. There is never a day that you're not going to learn more and yeah. have to put in Amen. the work to learn more. So just give a brief intro of yourself. I, I think most people watching or listening now, let's just say there's one who doesn't. Uh, t- <laughs> tell us just a little bit about you. Yeah. So I have uh, been in the orthodontic in- industry for 25 years now. This is my 25th year this year. Um, started very young. I've worked in every role in the in the practice. Um, I've always had a major passion for it. I love this industry. I love the people aspect of it. Uh, you know, Ben Fishbein bought our practice. I was working at the practice he bought it was a little over 10 years ago. And we just uh, clicked right from the start. We have a great relationship. Um, so we grew, you know, a very small practice. It was about a million dollars then into what it is now. So we we had about seven team members back then. We have a little over a hundred now. And yeah, just uh, I think the best part of what we do is, you know, we're able to serve so many patients, um, provide an affordable smile, you know, but a quality experience to our community. And that was always the that was always the goal and the mission of this practice. On my side of it, it's, um, you know, the best thing that I do is being able to provide career opportunities and leadership opportunities to someone who would not have traditionally thought they were able to move in that direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of kick it off and talk about what you're seeing. I'm kind of curious because we hinted at it with at fundamentals of just what does orthodontics look like this year? So many people are kind of in freak out mode. Yeah, for sure. And things are down and, you know, you see them kind of making rash decisions. What are you seeing and what are you noticing? Pretty much industry-wide, we're seeing a decrease. I mean, what we have is, right, we came off a COVID year, which was an unprecedented year for everyone. You know, a seven-week closure. Coming back from a seven-week closure, we were all killing it because there was just so so much of a backlog to get through. So we had a really great year in 2020, and then we had 21, which you can, you almost have to take that year out. And this is what mm. I tell my clients, almost like pretend 21 never happened. Mm. Look at everything on a three-year CAGR. And if you're measuring it that way, you're most likely still growing. Mm. But if you're measuring it compared to 2021, everyone's down. I don't know anyone that's not down unless it was a brand new startup that just started marketing. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some outliers, Jesse Carmen, uh, people that had never traditionally done marketing mm-hmm. that are getting into it now. Um, but the vast majority certainly down. Yeah. What do you, when you talk to people and maybe some of them are kind of in freak out mode a bit, what do you tell them to hopefully maybe calm them down and get them to think about the future? And obviously any business is going to be highs and lows and, and you're going to have to experience that even with orthodontics, which is supposed to grow like crazy, you're going to have years where it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I think that right now is just, it's not a time to be decreasing budgets significantly. Luckily with Ben, that's just not how he operates. Um, We're still putting as much into marketing, if not more. We actually hired a fourth full-time marketing person this past year, even though we're down just because we need to get ahead of it. So that's kind of like our first, um, first go-to, you know, if, if the numbers are down, we're not getting the leads we got in the past, we reach out to marketing, like, you know, what do we need to do now? Um, but I think it's just a lot of people are comparing where we are now to 21 and you can't, 
And so we're kind of looking at things on a day and annual basis rather than looking at it compared to where we were two years ago. So for Mm -hmm. us, like we want to be producing at least 25,000 a day, every clinical day. We're not there every month right now. And it's our first time since 2016. We haven't hit those numbers. So when people are, oh wow, I mean, we're still doing really well. We're still over 20. Um, but for us to hit 25, like if you look compared to maybe 2021, we were averaging 28 to 30,000 a day. 22, we were averaging like 24. Mm. Um, this year, I think our average would probably be about 22 to 23, which we did bring another full-time provider in. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a brand new location we just opened. So there are things that are going to fluctuate, but I would just say, uh, you know, don't, don't take your foot off the gas with marketing. It's one of the biggest things I'm seeing people do. I'm like, Mm. why are are you doing that? Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of what we should be doing. Well, you said something so interesting, like, you know, we look at like Amanda and the Fishbine team and, you know, some of our, let's just say fast growers, easy growers. I think of Harvey and Thomas as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when things have slowed down or the economy's gotten bumpy or we're not hitting the goals that we used to, your guy's mindset is, well, we need to spend more. Right. We're not letting the the throes of the day or the the wind that's upon us dictate the decisions Mm -hmm. we're making right now. Because I think so many people, when goals aren't being met or production's down or new patients are down, they're making decisions around this and they're going, Mm -hmm. oh, we're not doing what we did six months ago, 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. So we need a cut. And then I almost think about like why some people like you uh, crushed it when we opened after COVID, right? Like when we were shut down, you guys were still marketing, Mm -hmm. doing everything you could. JC was running consults. Right. Right. I think I remember you guys did something like with the first responders. Mm -hmm. and like we did a lot of marketing events. Right. So when the world was shut down, you and like, I think about Farina as well. Efros. Efros. Yeah. We're like, the mindset was almost like, this is a time that we can like buy market share at a discount because everybody else is retreating and crawling under a rock. Uh, it's kind of like the stock market, like buy low, Mm -hmm. sell high. We also had so many people, right? Like we didn't want to, um, furlough our team. So we paid our team Mm. the entire time we were shut down. We paid their full salary. And so, you know, we're like, okay, we have at that point, I think we had 85 team members, 85 people. There's nothing to do outside of, you know, assign two people to answer phones every day. Right. Not a lot of calls coming in. First couple of weeks were busy because we had thousands of patients to reschedule, you know, over that uh, period. But we're like, all right, well. The, the deal that we made was we're going to pay 100% of your salary. We, we're going to ask people that are salaried to work one day a week. Uh, and then these we don't have many salaried people, like seven or eight. And so they would work one day a week. And we'd assign, like, marketing events, team meetings. We, did, we redid. You guys, I think, did the same. But all of our training materials, checklists, the Google Drive, it just mm-hmm. cleaned everything up that had been pending. But, yeah, a lot of it was just community events and marketing because it's pretty cheap. I mean, people freak out about that, about getting out there in the community. They're like, well, we don't have the budget. We don't have the budget. It's so inexpensive to right. go to an event. And it's also so inexpensive to hire someone for marketing. And it's one of the biggest um, battles that I'll have with people I work with privately. They're like, well, I just, you know, I don't I don't have the need for a marketing person. I'm like, you have 25 employees. How do you not have a marketing person? It's crazy mm-hmm. to me. When we had 25 employees, we had two marketing people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're at 100 now with four. And it's like Dr. Ben says all the time, it's like, but what's what's the cost of an empty chair? Exactly. You know, what's what's the cost of an empty new patient consult? Now, maybe everybody doesn't do 20, 25, 30 exams in a day like you guys do. But even if I had six or seven mm-hmm. exam slots, you know, the way my brain works, and I'd actually be curious on your perspective of this, but, you know, let's say, let's just say average office converts 70% or so yeah, of consults. About. And so let's say I can do eight consults in a day, but I'm only seeing three or four in a day, right? At a 70% conversion, if I'm booking consults every hour, like what's an orthodontist time worth? Mm-hmm. Two grand an hour, three grand an hour, five grand an hour. Ben's time might yeah. be... <laughs> 20 grand an hour and uh for every open slot like what does that cost in the business what does it actually cost to go i don't know bring lunch to the firehouse mm-hmm. for example but are people even thinking about that like when you work with do they i mean largely we we don't see people thinking that way Not i really. think that it doesn't make issue. sense they, mm-hmm. like the uh, 10 grand ah it's like but 
Yeah. You got five open slots right. that could be produced five, you six know, grand a spot. Some do, to answer your question. The the rock stars do. Mm-hmm. But even I see some rock stars, like we, we work with someone mutually, you and I both, and uh, doesn't have a full-time marketing person. He's crushing it. Mm-hmm. Crushing it. But I'm like, look at how much you're leaving on the table. Mm. You're doing zero community marketing right now. You could have, and, and I showed him our referral breakdown where it's like 30% patient referrals, 30% community, and then, you know, 30% online. I'm like, when I look at this and I look at your practice, you're leaving 30% out in the community, mm. not even trying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's also interesting because I, uh, when we go to offices, a lot of them are in business parks. So the mm-hmm. one we just got back from, I mean, there was, and that was New York City, so there's probably thousands of businesses, but just in his direct block already I'm seeing like 20 that you should be talking to these people. I walk in, Hey, how many of these have you talked to? And I start rattling off the brands. Oh, none of them. Right. I'm like, I think traditionally in orthodontics, it was something that was never done. And, uh, we, you know, when we opened our first, uh, De Novo and Pace in 2016, it's one of those things, like I was out there doing the marketing for us back then. I was, I was like our marketing person. Mm -hmm. And I went into every local business, not just dental offices. So I'm like, look at all these hair salons and nail salons mm-hmm. and tanning salons and restaurants, l- little locally on- owned spots. Um, and so we would bring in what we call these neighborhood cards and give them, you know, they could hand them out to their customer base, like 500 off treatment or whatever call to action, you know, you mm-hmm. want to put on there. But we've continued that moving forward. Every time we open a new office, we'll visit every local dentist um, anytime our marketing reps have nothing else to do, they're out visiting local businesses. So our Cantonment office, Hannah had emailed this past week. She said, I had a free day. So I went and visited all the local businesses around, around the location. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what, it's like so, a gold mine. Yeah. Cor- it's crazy. Courting the dentist is not dead. Right. Well, so the dentist everybody. and, that's and the local everybody. business. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. But I mean, like just looking at the bread and butter from the general dentist, so mm-hmm. many people, oh no, I don't want to do that. You know, they're Too doing to it, keep up with they're it. doing right. Invisalign now. It's like but, Who cares? Yeah, but yeah. they're doing like what, three cases a month? So we'll take that. We actually do an Invisalign event for the general dentist and all the You our like community. their biggest cheerleader. Yeah, we're like, let me teach you how. We'll show you. <laughs> we'll show you how to do some easy cases and just send us your hard ones. Yeah. yeah. It was one of the actually one of the more interesting things Dr. Ben had said in this talk. He was mm-hmm. like, everybody's like you know, shunning the dentist for, right. for doing this. And Dr. Ben's like, no, we're going to be their biggest cheerleader, right. teach him a couple basic mechanics. Cause if I can, you know, be their biggest supporter and help you get an extra two, three cases a month, the complex ones, who are they going to refer right. to the one that's helping me out? And then when they maybe can't get the result, the patient wants, send them over. they're going to send them over, right? It's, it's you a, know, it's a difference in an abundance mindset and a scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. It's the same with us, and we have so many offices that don't want to implement whitening. They don't want to do it. They're going to lose the referrals. Like, we've been doing whitening for yeah. four years, I think. I got a great story on yeah. this from uh, our trip to New York. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> say any names, but if they're watching this, you might know who you are. <laughs> um, so the dentist that we visited, the story I was telling you. Yeah. So whatever. He's like, so what did you guys do uh, last night? And I was like, oh, we... We went out to dinner with a couple of our orthodontists here in the city. And he's like, oh, who is it? And I was like, oh, it's Dr. So-and-so and and Dr. So-and-so. He goes, oh, Dr. So-and-so? You'll never believe this. I used to refer all my ortho to him. And I was like, and why don't you anymore? Why'd you stop? I said, one, why don't you anymore? And two, why'd you choose him? And he goes, well, it's interesting. They actually never came into my office. They never courted me. I never met them. I did my own research found out who's close, who's got a pretty office, who's got cool doctors, and I chose them based on their reviews, their location, blah, 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 and just started sending them patients. I sent all my ortho to these guys. Um, He goes, I'm not, I don't need gifts and donuts and cookies, but it would be nice to like just get like an email or a call. Acknowledgement. An acknowledgement. Hey, Luke came in. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the case. He goes, over the year, two years I referred to them, I didn't get a single phone call, email, drop by, nothing. He's like, I don't need the gifts, but I got zero acknowledgement or correspondence, and I stopped referring to them. What a loss. That's a baller dental office, you said, and too. Yeah, like a lot of patients, and I'm like, this person they, they were referring to is a client of ours. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to Luke, and I'm like, I mean, are you surprised? Like. We were at dinner with them. They're like, oh, we haven't visited a dentist in eight years. Mm. You know? As a brag, almost. Also, also, 
It, also, I'm like, really? We visit them every day. Yeah, like, like, but we'll we'll see. Obviously, when we turn on campaigns, you're going to get some dental type leads, people right. that need dental work. There needs to be a referral system both ways. Exactly. I'm like, so it's funny for us, you know, with the size we are now, right? We're a bigger referrer to a general dentist than they could ever be to us. Right. Huh. Not to sound like I'm not trying to sound cocky by saying that. Right. It's right, just right. the the numbers speak for themselves. So for our team, we were just in a call center meeting on Friday and I'm sitting there with our 10, you know, call center employees. And I still like to go to the team meetings. I want to hear what's being said. I like to, you know, throw a little motivation in, give them a couple podcast recommendations mm-hmm. or book recs. I'm like, you never know who's going to be your next rock star. And so I still continue to cultivate these relationships. But I'm in there and, you know, we're going through the PCC notes um, and they're like, okay, so we're, we're going role playing, right? And we're like, all right, somebody calls and, you know, you're setting up a new patient appointment. And then at the end, they're like do you guys um, do crowns or whatever, whatever mm-hmm. the question is. And so our team members like, we just tell them, no, we don't do that. We'll go ahead and cancel your appointment and, um, you know, let us know if you ever need us again. I'm like, no. no. Okay, first of all, <laughs> we don't cancel anyone's appointment. Right. Like, are, are we serious? No, we, we continue the appointment. We'll go ahead and see them because even if they're not a patient right now, eventually they or someone they know – are going to need orthodontics. So if we give them a, a great experience, even if they don't need treatment, that's great. That's all we need. But secondly, this is a great opportunity for us to continue solidifying those relationships with these dentists in the community that we have great relationships with. We need to send them patients. Please don't just hang up and say, let me know when you, you know if you need help finding a dentist. Like, no, here's our top five people we want you to refer to. So I think being in those little meetings like that, though, I learned little things in mm-hmm. our own practice. And I'm like, oh, no, not like that. Yeah. I mean, the amount of people we work with that, like, this, the moment somebody says on the phone, like, I haven't had a cleaning in a year. Oh, yeah. Or I need an implant or I need a filling. I mean, they can't get off the phone fast enough. I know. Enough. That's crazy. I'm like, they still have family. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and you never know. Like, they might have something so quick and then start treatment. Yeah, yeah and, and, I don't want them in my to, office. To piggyback off that, we'll ask them, well, what's your referral process? Oh, let's say they have one. A lot of them don't. Mm-hmm. A lot of them do just get off the phone. But if they do, I say, well, does the dentist know that you sent them that lead? Right. Oh, no, we don't We don't talk to them. We just Like, hang up and call. Hey, just uh, gave a patient your number. If they call, here's... Right. One. I mean, you could even make a Two spreadsheet, yeah. share it with them, sign a BAA with them, whatever mm-hmm. you want to do, but... You need to ha- actually track that mm-hmm. because otherwise, if it's like out of sight, out of mind. Right. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but kind of shifting gears, uh, another thing that we've seen a lot of lately, and, and you know, we're, we're trying to pick up on these false beliefs or limitations or things that really hinder growth, is to scale, I have to buy more locations, even though the four locations I already have are underproducing. Mm. And so what do you tell somebody who has too many locations? They, they, to his point with chair time, and you guys have, are the ones who kind of taught us that, mm-hmm. you have all this empty chair time. Your buildings are just turned off for right. two, three days a week. So I think there's different ways to look at this. And certainly Ben and I over the years have had differences in opinion on this. But for me, it's numbers. I'm a numbers person. If we're not producing at least 25000 per day, we're not going to open another day. Right. Doesn't make any sense to. Why would we spend money to? You know, your your payroll costs are about twenty three, twenty five percent overall. Um, we're not going to pay the team to be there another day when we could produce just as much in one day as two. Um, but I think that you know, if you're doing well and you've already created a brand that's working, going and open another location makes sense. Even if you're not going to hit that twenty five per day or whatever it is. Let's say the average is fifteen thousand per day. I don't even know what it is anymore right now, but um, I would just, you know, you don't want to open another location just to open another location. Mm -hmm. If you have room to produce another one, two million in the locations you're in, why spread your resources? Yeah, that's what we see all the time. I mean, like Doc's burned out, Mm -hmm. you know, he's got to travel with the team. Uh, he's got an associate that's only there one day a week. Right. And it's like, and the associate doesn't want to do as much as he does or she does. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just double down because typically what we see is 
people are so underproducing with the locations they have. Mm -hmm. And this is a common thing we'll hear is if I could just get my locations to 2 million, even their main Mm -hmm. established location, I'm like, you're thinking way too small. Right. We could get this location to 4 million. Listen, we've gotten one location to 10 million. Right. Sky's the limit. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a beast of a location, but. Yeah. But relatively, if you don't have, what, 12 chairs and three console rooms, I mean, what, a typical office that has five, six, seven chairs could be producing. Three day a week, three, four million, easy. Right. Right. I mean, that should be pretty simple. We'll we'll have people in highly populated areas tell us that that's not pot. Nobody's doing that here. I'm like, uh. No, they are. Somebody's doing it. It just ain't you. It ain't you. (laughs) We have a friend down in Miami that was producing like seven, eight million, five chairs, 1,700 square feet. Mm -hmm. They were bursting at the seams. Mm -hmm bursting i mean yeah. built a new location now and they're crushing it but yeah, i'm like yeah. come on we produced i think it was seven million the year before we renovated pensacola yeah and you guys saw what it looked like then it was insane yeah we yeah. had con- we had people falling through the ceilings mid-construction <laughs> you know all kinds of crazy <laughs> things happening the worst looking office you could possibly imagine and people are still signing up every day to start it was actually mind-blowing mm. i was doing a residency talk um on Friday, I was at West Virginia University, and this uh, one of the residents is like, you know, if I'm really going to be a, you know, direct to consumer type of practice, like I have, you know, the office is probably has to be like gorgeous, mm. and I was like, well, yes, but let me tell you this story about my friends Amanda and Dr. Ben. They were producing orthodontics with people falling through the ceiling with exposed mm. wiring and walls. Didn't you have patients like sign in mm-hmm. the plywood? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, do I not recommend. I just say clean, modern, and simple, right? Yeah. Like clean, you don't need and gold sh- you chandeliers do not have to spend and a fortune. champagne Listen, and strawberries and I go in an chairs. office that's beautiful. I love it. Like, I love the vibe when they've brought in these, you know, seven figure designers to do these incredible remodels. I'm like, man, this is nice. Does it produce more? No. Yeah. I mean, you, as long as, and I think like what we decided from the, from the very beginning was when Ben bought the practice, there was no one in this town offering affordability options. Mm-hmm. So the vast majority of patients in our own community couldn't get orthodontic treatment. There was absolutely no way. 15 was the minimum, 15% was the minimum down payment. Wow. 25% if you didn't have great credit. Whoa. And mind you, you got a credit check, of course. And... <laughs> Um, when he bought the practice, his mission and goal really was to be able to provide access to care to as many patients as possible without letting finances stand in the way, but he wanted it to be a nice experience. He didn't want to have some, you know, dumpy office that yeah. felt like what traditionally would look like an affordable, mm-hmm. you know, option. And so I think there's ways to make it clean and nice and spend money where you need to spend money, like on you know, stone countertops or, you know, nice wood floors. Mm -hmm. But furniture, you can find clean, nice furniture on Wayfair, Amazon. Yeah. I mean, we do it every time. So top-notch experience and affordability can live in the same. Absolutely. And the the key that ties that all together is having an incredible team. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, it's like look at Chick-fil-A, look at Starbucks. Like these are, you know, low-ticket items, but the experience a lot of times is high. Unless and they're so, in the airport. Yeah, of course. Anything. Fake Starbucks. Yeah. Anything fake goes in the airport. But just had to make yeah. that disclaimer, you know. But you guys had a vision for where the business was going to go. Obviously, maybe not everything was on paper. You guys evolved. So many times we're we're asking owners, doctors, and they're just kind of pulling it out. Mm-hmm. Of, you know, well, I'd like to be at $2 million or, you mm-hmm. know, this. And it's like where is this written down or Mm -hmm. how many times do you rally your team around this? Right. I just thought about it since you asked me. Yeah. Right. There's almost no communication. Um, Yeah. What's funny to me too is most doctors are so terrified to talk about their production or their goals in general. And I'm like, you guys know Google is free. Mm -hmm. Everyone on your team knows how to look up what your annual production is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like literally, I mean, they know how many patients start every day. Yeah. They know how much you charge. Yeah. They can Google what's the traditional overhead and orthodontic. They know how much you bring home. Yeah. It's not rocket science. So the fact that people are so scared to talk about it, I think it's just an archaic way of thinking about it because pre-Google, right, like no one did know. 
but the information we have at our fingertips now makes um, makes it pretty easy to yeah not be as worried about it. So mm-hmm. you guys talk about that to some level. So that's a good question. We do. We talk about our goals to the team. Now we differentiate by department. So if we're mm. if we're talking to the full team, we're like, hey guys, goal today is five starts. Talking in terms of starts. Yeah. So yeah. if we're talking to the full team, we'll say in different locations, hey guys, goal in Cantoma is seven starts, goal in Niceville is five starts, and we'll talk to them like that. For our managers, which is our, you know, next level up, like daily operation managers, we'll tell them daily goals. Goal today is 24,000. Goal today is 27,000, depending on where we are in the month. When we're talking to our senior leaders, we'll talk by quarterly goals. Mm. Hey, guys, the goal for this quarter is $5.5 million, or whatever it might be. And then um, just amongst the, a couple of us, we'll talk about the full annual goals. But we're not really throwing out, hey, guys, goal for this year is $24 million right. to the team as a whole because yeah. they don't understand. Yeah. And but, they definitely don't understand overhead. Right. Regardless of how it's positioned, though, whether it's in starts, whether it's quarterly, whether it's production, uh, being focused and centered on goals with yes. the team is part of the culture. Every single day. We talk about it every single day. I mean, the amount of people we talk to – and it's like you, you either ask the doctor, like, have you shared these with the mm-hmm. team? No. And it's or really any small th- business. We're just yeah. focused. Yeah. Right. It, it really does transcend. And that's why so many of small businesses fail, you know, over a decade. I don't know if this stat's true, but I read on Google like 80%. Well, it has to be true then. I, I think this is a big reason yeah. why. And good team members also want to know what they're going to be part of right? And and what they're working towards. If they don't know that, they just get stuck and they're a cog mm-hmm. in the wheel and they're mm-hmm. going to go to somewhere else. And that kind of leads into my next question. Are you, I'm assuming you're hearing from a lot of practices that they have attrition and we can't hire, we can't keep people. What's your philosophy on Listen, this? Listen, I had three people quit last week. Mm. Three. And they're all going to other local orthodontics mm. offices. About I'm that. fine. Like, wish you the best. Yeah. We've also had three people in the last few weeks come back from leaving and going to other local offices. They do too many tads at this office. So I'm like, you know what? For me, <laughs> when people good. leave, I'm 100% never going to ask you and talk you into staying. If you want to leave, that's part of your journey. And I absolutely wish you the best. I wish you all the joy, happiness, and success that there is, you know, in mm-hmm. this life for you. But you're, the best. you're never going to say, and I've never heard you say, we have a hiring problem. Oh, no. No, we don't have a hiring problem. Yeah. And people are so baffled by this because we don't, you know, we don't start people out that high. Right. We have a very clear, um, you know, hiring structure. The the vast majority of our patient or our team members come from direct referrals. They have zero experience. We're training them on the job and we start them at a very low hourly rate uh, because we're devoting so much time and effort and energy and money into training them. Uh, But we're clear during the interview, hey, this is where you're going to start This is where you're going to go in three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. We show them exactly where they'll be at each level as long as they're, you know, hitting the stats that we set for each level. So you have a a path that you can show people. And I I think 99.9% of people are attracted to that because they can see Mm -hmm. here's where I can grow. Here's a company Mm -hmm. that wants to grow me. But then they also see your culture, brand, values marketed. Maybe in some cases they've been seeing this for five years. And that uh, really helps, I think, the interview process Mm -hmm. as well and attract talent. And so many businesses are not thinking about this. We didn't think about it until like 2020 is, Mm -hmm. oh, we, we have to market and sell to talent not just our customer. Right. And and there's there's times for both, I, I would say. We did just do something we have never done in the history of our practice this past week. We hired um, – we had this this guy that worked for us for a couple years, and I'm talking rock star. Like one of those guys, He put it, when he put his notice in, like I almost cried. Mm. He was a three-day-a-week team member. He was going to school. I think he was pre-law, sharp guy. He worked in the call center. Two years he worked for us. When he put his notice in, it was one of those like moments where you're like, Mm. I just lost someone that was going to be a big part of, you know, what we're doing here. Right. And so we had had many conversations with this guy like, hey, we see you as a manager. You're going to be a manager here. Um, But we we're never going to have a manager that works three days a week. So Mm. when you get to a point where you're, you know, you're able to commit full time, 
we would love to, you know, provide that opportunity for you. Well, he ended up leaving, going and working out in sales for a couple years. And he, uh, he called us about, I don't know, four, four or five weeks ago. He's like, hey, can I get an interview? You're hired. Like, you don't even have to finish. <laughs> so he comes in and we sit across from him. I'm like, listen, we've never done this, but like, we're going to bring you back in as a manager. Um, uh-huh. So we hired him. He started this week. We announced it to our team. We announced him as assistant manager while he's going through his 90 day period. And then after that 90 days, he will be a full manager. But, you know, so I've, I've always said I would never hire someone in as a manager. Yeah. And I just did it for the first time in 10 years of Ben and I working together. Yeah. This guy did have two years prior with us and we knew, right. You know, what it makes we wanted from him or and for him. But so I guess never say never, but yeah. you know, I think that it helps too, that we're, we're direct referrals. 100% of the people we're hiring and interviewing are coming from someone else that already knows either they work here or someone in their family works here. Um, my daughter, Jenna, for instance, just, she left maybe three, four months ago to go work for Glenn Krieger and one of his startups. And she'd worked for us for probably, I don't know, six or seven years before that. And so she left, she's not here anymore. And I walk in one day and there's this really big guy in Brittany's office. She's interviewing. I'm like, who's this? It's Jenna's husband's best friend. And we hired him to be an assistant, which he's a huge bodybuilder type guy. I think guy. he was at my last adjustment. He's so good. He's like, he is one of the Big best dude. people. He's huge. Yeah. Which is so funny because when we were sitting across from him, like, I can't see him in the yeah. clinic. Like, I just can't, I can't see that. Yeah. But he's one of the best assistants we've hired. So I, all of that, just to say, you never know where your next great person is going to come from. But if you're offering like direct referral type interviews, they know what they're coming into, right. right? Like this guy knew he was coming in to start for very low hourly to get training in something that he could make really good money in long term, but it's going to take a little while to get there. Now, right? Like you said, you're all internal referral. Yeah. Um, we've had tons of people obviously come to Fishbine Fundamentals mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they're always – they're the, the mindset is always, oh, well, they can do that because – 100 people. They've got a hundred, but they can do that because blah, blah, blah. Pensacola Ta- must be this magic yeah, it's an outlier. kingdom. Yeah. It's a magic kingdom. <laughs> right. Um, but let's go back to like way back in the day mm-hmm. when it was just you and Dr. Ben. Was it always still internal referral? It was. So when, or you were grabbing talent. No, we were internal referrals and people say that all the time. They're like, Oh, well, it's easy for you because you guys have a hundred people. I'm like, I remember being, one of seven, when he bought the practice, we had seven people. There's only three of us that are still here from that original seven. Actually, I think one just retired. It might just be Diane and I left. Um, but the first two people we hired, one was my daughter, Casey. Mm-hmm. And the second was Nancy, who Dr. Ben had worked with at a previous practice. They were both direct referrals, direct relationships with the two of us. The third person we hired was Eliza, who was our waitress at our fancy Christmas party we had gone to that uh-huh. year. And she had the best personality. She was almost, I mean, she almost got me to eat lamb and I don't even eat meat. <laughs> I'm like, you need to be a TC. <laughs> How do I get you in for a day job? And so we hired her like two weeks later. Um, after that, we hired Brittany, who Dr. Ben knew from CrossFit. So there were there were a lot of relationships that were, you know, we had already had and we knew we were growing we didn't have a lot of budget to hire, but we knew that we were going to be growing. It's hard not to grow when you were producing under a million, right? Like at that point, it's there's only one way to go here. Um, but yeah, so we just started. Now, when we had our biggest growth year, we had one year where we went from four million to to eleven. So we had a seven million growth in one year. Say that one more time. From four million to eleven. Wow. In one year, and you can imagine like the amount of understaffed we were. Mm. It wasn't even. It wasn't even in the same realm of what people say. Oh, it's I'm in a tough spot. I'm like, no, yeah, <laughs> no. Let me tell you, those days I was the manager. I think I was like the office manager, clinical manager, TC, marketing coordinator. I, I wore every hat. Uh, but so we placed a couple of ads on Indeed. First mm-hmm. time we'd ever done it. We had some interviews, not stellar, you know, not stellar. But we hired one person from this interview process, and I ended up having to let her go on day three. Wow. It was Whoa. just. It was not the vibe. You know, yeah. she was. She wasn't friendly to our patients, and every person prior to her, we had honestly handpicked to work Mm. in this practice. And so we realized from that, it was the only person we hired like that. 
And the day I let her go, I was like, I'm not, we're not doing this again. Pull the ads. I don't want to run any Indeed ads. Mm. We'll ask our team. That's when we started offering the referral bonus. For the team members. Yep. We told the team, listen, we really need people, but we want people like you. So anybody that you know, friends, family, anyone, um, will give you a $250 bonus if you can refer someone that we hire. And we've done it for years. So having 100 plus team members now makes it maybe easier because there's more people to pull from, but it's you not... You could say that, but we have nine offices. But it's not so, like yeah. that's the reason why yeah. we're able to hire all internally because it right. happened that way when it was Yeah, no, we've done it. I think it's the culture that you build. If you have right. a great culture and your team is happy at their job, other people are going to want to work there. I mean, people want to have a job that they enjoy. I think people want to work for someone that has built a brand and a, exactly. and a reputation. And I think that we've been able to do that. Somebody yesterday was talking about, about Dr. Ben. They're like, he's a pillar in this community. He is. Absolutely. Yeah. At this point, he is a pillar in this community. He wasn't eight years ago. Right. You know, he was just a new guy that had just moved here from up north. It was a little more at that point, people taking a chance, you know, on us. But now I think that we've built something that it's a little safer for someone to come into. Yeah. And I think the the takeaway is it's not magic. Pensacola isn't this Mm -mm. magical fairy tale place. You guys just did the work and it's kind of like compounding interest. You know, you put Mm -hmm. money in the market or you put money in an investment you keep doing it every day. Like good right. investors, they're putting money in the market every day, mm-hmm. every week, every paycheck. They're not touching it and it's growing, 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 growing. Well, 10 years later, like I think that the average is you can double your money every seven years, dependent on the market. That's what you guys were able to do in your business. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the ROI is far greater in your business because you have all the control. Mm-hmm. But what most people miss out on is they just try to go for here. Right. And they don't do any of this foundational work, Mm -hmm. but you guys were able to do that. And that's what I always try to get people to understand about you when they come to fundamentals and fishbine is you guys just didn't go from zero to hero. Right. Yeah. (laughs) It's like you were the anti-hero for eight years. I'm still the anti-hero. Yeah. Let's be clear. Four years, five years. But it, it takes actual work. It isn't this, um, this magic wand. Right. No, you know? it's a lot of work. And it's so funny for people to see now, you know, we are uh, 10 and a half years into working together and, you know, he works a couple of days a week. I, we run a couple of businesses, a few, honestly. And, you know, we're not in the ortho practice as much as we once were, but the old, old people remember, I mean, we live there. Like I, I had a shower in my office because I would go to the gym at five, be at the office by six fifteen a.m. Leave there most days, 5 30, 6 p.m. in the evening, never taking lunch. This was Monday through Friday. I mean, it was years of hustle and really, you know, yeah. giving it everything we had to get to the point where we were able to build leaders and create people that could run things, you know, on the day to day. But it's easy to look at it now and be like, oh, yeah, they have it made. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, you have no yeah. idea. Yeah. You Only were- the old people really know. And I, I think if anybody will sit down and make a plan, mm-hmm. make targets, Maybe some of them don't make sense, which they'll figure mm-hmm. out along the way and bring their team in on it. Right. It's And we have budgets for everything. I, pe- I think people are always so shocked to hear that. You know, we do a lot of team appreciation in our practice. And it it makes me a little sad when I see offices that don't. And mm-hmm. I work with offices. It's like they have a team meeting and they're reminding their team, hey, don't forget to bring your lunch. I'm like, oh, mm. lunch. okay. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it's just never been one of the things that – Ben wanted to save money on. He wanted to show team appreciation even when he wasn't bringing a paycheck in. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to invest money into these people. Uh, I appreciate what they're doing. And so we, you know, we bring lunch in every Monday. We have snacks and drinks in the office every day. We do a lot of pop up, little, just little stuff. It shows a lot of appreciation. We do coffee at least once or twice a week for the whole team. I mean, there's a lot of money that's spent but there's a budget for it. And at the end of every year, right now, this week, actually, I'm working on budgets for the new year. And I'll take collections, divide that out by, you know, whatever category. Mm. So we'll, our marketing budget, the same, we'll take 7% of collections, figure out where all of it's going to go. Um, team appreciation, there's a budget for every little thing we do. I mean, down to the, you know, $1.25 per day per office for snacks and drinks. 
So it, there's a there's a math to it. There's a science to it. It's not just. I think people look at us and they're like, oh, they just spend money, you know, every day. There's no. <sighs> it's calculated. Yeah, th- yeah, it is calculated. I mean, you can't afford for it not to be. I know you're a big Simon Sinek guy. Yes. I mean, I think we all in this room kind of nerd out on mm-hmm. personal for development sure. in some way, but. Yeah. The f- way I get the way I got introduced to Simon Sinek uh, was actually not one of his books. It was a one of his first TED talks. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the Golden Circle, um, and like the whole premise of that is just people don't buy what you do; they buy why you do it. Right. And so I look at coming back to this word, and it's such a buzzword today. Culture, mm-hmm. you know, everybody wants to talk. It about is a bu- it is a buzzword. Culture. It almost turns into like a you know, woo woo, Feel uh, good. Yeah. let's all, mm-hmm. you know, powwow mm-hmm. around the campfire and culture together, you know, drink kombucha <laughs> or whatever, but. Which could be cool, maybe. Which I could mean, be cool. Hey, I like, hey, I like a, don't get me wrong. I like a kombucha and a campfire, but you know what I'm getting at? It's a little kumbaya, yeah. you yeah, yeah, know, yeah. but it's something that you guys have not kumbaya It's something that you it really internalize and, and live by. And it makes me think like some of these people that, live in areas with tons of people, right? We Like our talent pool in Pensacola is small. Very, small. very small. So, small. Right, you have to develop that talent. And so, you know, oh, I can't find people. I can't hire people. Everybody leaves me. And it's sometimes it just makes me think, like, have you ever thought, like, maybe you're the problem? It's funny because— Not to be negative, but it's like you and Dr. Ben were so intentional mm-hmm. about how you make your people feel and how they're treated. It's also a long game. It's people, a long game. If, I had, if I could tell you how many times in the past year I've heard— You guys know Miranda yeah. Riley, our creative yeah. director. Yeah. And the amount of comments I get from our private clients like, oh, she's a, she's a unicorn. Where did you find her? She is— How do you even find someone like that? I'm like— I worked side by side with this girl for four and a half years to develop right. the characteristics that she has. Now, I don't, you can't find someone like that that knows how to do all the things out yeah. the gate. Mm-hmm. You can find someone that has an incredible personality that shows signs of being a great leader and being a self starter and just being someone mm-hmm. that you don't have to hold her hand. And that's what we saw in her. And when I find someone like that, I don't want to stick them in one role. I want them to learn every aspect of the practice, and then that kind of person is the absolute best leader. Like, to have in fundamentals, to have someone like that, that no matter what department is struggling, one of our clients could call her. She can walk them through the clinical issues. She can walk Mm. them through Mm -hmm. needing to create a PowerPoint. She can walk them through managerial issues, HR issues. Um, But it's a long game. You're not going to find someone like that and develop them in three months. Most people give up and don't have the patience to really put the time and energy into developing the leaders. Yeah, that is a great thing to talk about. Think about anything else besides like your practice. Think about a sports team. Tom Brady was not, you know, if you're looking at a list, he wasn't like, oh, this is the guy I got to bring on my right. team. When he Shout gets, out Brock Purdy. It, when he gets to New England, he's, you know, second or third string. What is he doing the whole time, you know, through high school, college, second string? He's training. He's watching Mm -hmm. film. He's getting developed. He's getting mentored. When it's game time and the first string got injured, he was ready. Mm -hmm. Now he, by that time, had become exceptional. But what if you were, like, looking at him in high school and (laughs) never could see the mentorship or develop or development training that needed Mm -hmm. to happen? But... We don't think about these other situations. Right. We got to think about, let's zoom out. Mm -hmm. How does the real world look? You know, if I bring somebody in as my stock trader, am I just going to throw him in and he's just going to be like making these big trades on Wall Street? No, he's going to be mentored. He's going to be trained. Mm -hmm. But as small business owners, we just, we miss that. Nobody has the patience and they don't want to invest the time and money into it. And, and to be honest, it is, it's a huge investment to, to, Take someone with zero experience and develop them into someone like Brittany Svoboda. Years. Yeah. How many times? We've flown her all around the country. Yep. Taking her to different trainings and seminars. And, I mean, you you don't just wake up with someone like that. Mm-hmm. It's, she's a rock star. She's a rock Shout star. Shout out, Brittany. We no love kidding. you. Couldn't make it through one day without her. Yeah. I must think about our relationship, Luke. I don't know if you know how we met. Um, I actually met Luke and Justin on a sales call. 
I was working at another agency. I don't think I knew that, which is yeah. weird because I feel like I know most of y'all's stories. Yeah, so there was a... We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll skip the long story. The short story is but the, the, the sales call was bad, but... I thought it was great, but he still he got tells the sale. me... He still tells me it's awful and we were laughing at you and making fun of you and how terrible <laughs> oh, it was. And like, we had the card out. We thought we were getting... Okay, the, the call we were getting on this was is a framed. Great story. Okay. Was framed, oh, you need to make a payment? <laughs> Let's put you on with hair. Here comes on the call. The whole dog guns and pony blazing, show. blazing, write down three numbers, circle <laughs> one. Oh, stop. I mean, but I, I think the important part here is we saw something in Harrison that a lot of at. people don't have. Right. And a, a lot of people in high ticket sales are afraid to make the ask or make you feel mm-hmm. uncomfortable or challenge you. He had that. So I instantly thought, oh, we just need to train him on our system. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how long have you been here now? Four and a half years. Sales is confidence. I mean, you, you're you not going to get around that. We were um, we were at a mutual client's practice in Ohio recently. And, I mean, he's got this guy's got some rock star TCs. And they have grown, as you know, tremendously this year. And we're sitting in on a couple of consults. And it was two, three, four in a row where his TCs are over $7,000 fee presentations, no one batting an eye, no discounts given. And same day start, same day start, same day start, same day start. I'm like on the fourth one with the over $7,000 fee, this girl same day starts. I'm like, when people say it's impossible, I'm like, please come and listen to this. And they had just left our TC empowerment course and we're doing the exact Mm. fee presentation that we teach. I'm like, this is not rocket science. People make this so hard, but at the end of the day, it comes down to, the TC's confidence in what they're offering, the doctor's ability to get out of the way mm. and let the TC do their job because these doctors are not salesmen. They do not need to be in the room. Mm-hmm. They need to come in. They need to say hi. They need to, you know, look at the records, give them a treatment plan. Beautiful teeth. And, and get out. Yeah. Let the TC do what they need to do. If you have a TC in the room that's not a salesman, you need to find a new TC. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that is the job. Nobody wants to say that because it's not pretty. This is a medical industry that... Well, I believe if you can't sell somebody, you can't help them. Sales, if we have the right perspective, I think sales, uh, asterisk here, we're operating from a place of integrity. Mm -hmm. The product or service that we're pushing is going to make a positive impact in their life, right? If those two things are not in alignment, this statement is off the table. But I say if those two things are in alignment, closing somebody down is actually the highest form of Mm -hmm. service you can give them. Because if I can't close you, I can't help you. Right. Especially same day. Save them the time We're and the energy time. of coming back. But we we train our team all the time. Like, these people didn't fall out of the sky and land in your consult room. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They actually clicked no. on an, a link or called and made an appointment. There was They reached out to us no, in some way, around. shape, or form. So that tells me they want to be here. Uh, if they can start treatment and the doctor says, let's go ahead and move forward with treatment— there is no reason why they shouldn't start today. Unless the roadblocks are created by Unless you. Unless the obstacles are thrown out there by the TC. And I could tell you a hundred stories right. even recently of, you know, TCs throwing out roadblocks. And I'm I'm like, well, why are you even – that's why we tell our TCs less is more. That's huge though because how many doctors do we know who go in and try and run the show? Right. Oh, and it's not, not about me uh, – no ego mm-hmm. here. It's not about me, but uh, 30 minutes later, I'm right. explaining yeah. what I'm still talking. Cephalophagram. Oh, they wanted the whatever. song and dance. Right. No, they didn't. No. No. Did yeah. you see their eyes glaze over and they completely tuned it's out? It's information overload. Now they're leaving because mm-hmm. they can't even make a decision, which is what I would do in that situation as well. This feels more serious than I thought it would. Right. I thought I was coming yeah. in for braces and colors right. today. Why are we looking at x rays? Yeah, skull? I think the way our TCs do it is so beautiful because they keep it so simple. We yep. offer an affordable option from the gate, like out of the gate. It's this is what we do. They don't have to admit to us in front of their kid that they can't afford that down payment or mm-hmm. that they can't afford to pay in full. Like we're not asking for that. We're asking for 300 down, 169 a month. It's pretty easy. So let's kind of wind it down with Fishbine Fundamentals. For those listening, watching who may not know, I think most of them do know, but maybe they don't. What what are you guys wanting to do with that? What are you offering? Because so many people contact us and they're like, hey, should we do a one-on-one? Should we, 
do this type of training? Should When's the next the course? Event? Uh, yeah. So what's yeah. that look like and, and what's your kind of goal and vision? Yeah. So we started the course as a way to just streamline, you know, you, you see an orthodontic practice that has extreme growth and everybody wants to see what they're doing. There's got to be some secret magic that they're you know, always a secret. It's, it's probably a book we read and, and that's all it took right yep. there. So they want to know what that book is. Where do I get that book? <laughs> The, the other part is nobody wants to read, though, yeah. so that's funny. Um, but Tell so, them it was my book. Yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so we started the conference as a way to just streamline, you know, and make it a little less chaotic. I love order, and, and Dr. Ben's a little more, you know, he's mm – -hmm. It's he's you know you know how he is he's funny it's like oh yeah we can do this sure of course like we would have people show up two three different people in the same week I'm like like you said about your story when you went into the dental office and yeah. they weren't expecting you we had multiple times Who where that you? happened right where Who I'm like oh I, I know I have no idea <laughs> so we we started the course I think we've done I think we've had eighteen fully sold out courses at this point um, I think we started it in 2017 or 2018 and then from there we started the one on one program because the courses would fill up. We only offer, you know, three or four a year and they fill up and people don't want to wait. Our next available date right now, we have a few left for August 24. And then after that, it's going to be our, our HIP course in November. So we started the one-on-one -on -one program, which is essentially very similar to the course, only it's a lot more one-on-one. -on -one. So somebody comes in, they spend a full clinical day with us, you know, whatever department they want. And then probably two years ago, we started offering virtual options, which are very popular now. Mm. Um, so we do you know, like a half day, whatever department they want. It's always me and Miranda and then whatever other director mm -hmm. um, over whatever department they want. And then after, you know, aside from those things, we also do um, private consulting. We reserve that for clients that have already been through one-on-one -on -one training in the conference. And just mm -hmm. we are very selective with who we work with. Um, we want people with certainly abundance mindset, growth yeah. mentality. I, I don't want to spend months working with someone who – that would never work here. I'm like, okay, I'm not for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not for everyone, and I'm certainly not for anyone that thinks that would never work here. Yep. So, um, yeah, those are the writing those are off the, the possibilities before. Yeah, they even... like I really want to work with people that have the mindset that are willing to get out of their own way, let their team do what needs to be done to grow this practice. Because you're not going to do it by yourself. I need your team to grow this practice. Typically, why people say that. It's not that they actually believe that. It's that it's making them uncomfortable. Right, for sure. But growth happens when you're uncomfortable. Like my six-month-old, he's like bawling his eyes out because he's teething gnawing on his hand. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> he's not comfortable. Right. But he's growing. Right. You yeah. know, he's healthy. And again, if you just zoom out and look at the way the mm -hmm. world works, we need to sometimes be uncomfortable. Right. We have a mutual client, Jesse Carmen in Ohio. Love that guy. But he, uh, you know, he came to Fundamentals. He brought his whole team. And then he came back. It was like a month later for the TC course. You know, you bring like 15 people down to Florida. Huge expense. Right. Yeah. That was a huge expense on his part. And then only, I think it was four weeks later, was our TC only event. He brought four more people down just for that. Wow. And these these same people had, had already been here a month before. Um, but we had a TC-focused event. So... From that point, he leaves. They, you guys, and they started working with y'all. Like they mm -hmm. had a massive amount of growth, and we started working with him privately, one on one. And he's had an extreme amount of growth this year. But he was telling me last week, you know, the reason this has worked so well is I told my team from day one, whatever Amanda and Miranda suggest, we're going to try it. Yep, we're mm. going to try anything that anything they suggest, because the worst case scenario, it doesn't work, and we change it back. We're not doing brain surgery here. Let's, you know, let's try whatever they say. So we ended up doing, we made some hard changes with his team. We, we switched people into different departments. We changed their fees. We changed the entire process of their console. There was a, we developed a call center. There was a lot of things that were uncomfortable, um, but he was willing to get out of the way and see the big picture. And it's, I mean, tenfold for him. Bingo. The sky's the limit. Yeah. So how Love can that. how can somebody get a hold of you guys who's interested in learning more? Fishbindfundamentals.com is our website. And then they can always email Miranda or Casey. It's Miranda at fishbindgroup.com. Same Casey at fishbindgroup.com. We have tons of people reach out with questions and we're always happy to answer, you know, things that we can via email. Um, you know, we're happy to schedule calls with people. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I feel like we could, 
I feel like we could talk all day. Maybe we could schedule a time even with Ben to come in and just yeah. like talk for hours. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time. Of course. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Hey, did you enjoy this video? Click right here for another great video for orthodontist and dentist. We hope to see you there.